to another What's Up Wednesday with your host, Roman Siobhan, 321 Kiteboarding. Uh, today, it's really, really rainy outside, and uh, normally I'm, I'm sitting in the shop in a beautiful, scenic view, but today I'm inviting you to our studio. So uh, this is where we film, you know, how-to videos and product review videos and things like that. So hopefully the background's not too boring for everybody because we've got some really cool subjects today. Um, we are going to be talking about just my personal week like we always do. I know everyone's really excited to hear about that. Um, we're also going to go over clean water and clean environment. I think it's something that a lot of us as kiteboarders care about anyway. Um, and it's a good thing to, to cover because we can kind of control a lot of what we do with our environment and I think we're good stewards of it. So when people see us, they know that we are outdoor people and we want to uh, take care of the outdoors. So the other thing we're going to go over is how to select a kite. A lot of you are beginners. A lot of you have been in the sport for a while. And a lot of you just simply are absolute shredders and know exactly what to pick, but maybe don't know what's on the market because there's been a lot of additions to kiteboarding. Uh, one of the other things we're going to do is basically um, how to progress your riding through some of this equipment. So whether or not you are a beginner, ah, an intermediate, or other, yeah, you like my props? Pretty cool. Okay, so whether or not you're one of those, doesn't matter. We're going to help you figure out how to take your riding to the next level. But first, we're going to go over the What's Up Wednesday. How was Rose week? My week was phenomenal. We've had a lot of good wind. We've had customers visiting us to do kiteboarding lessons that I've gotten to take part in, which is great because I really miss kiteboarding and I miss just seeing people go from nothing to getting up and riding on the board. If you haven't seen some of our videos on YouTube, obviously go on there, you'll see some of our new riders get up and go and it's really cool. Whether you haven't taken your first lesson yet or whether you've been kiteboarding for years, it's neat to see. Um, bring me to a point of make sure to give us thumbs up if you do like our videos and if you like this one so I can keep coming back every week and doing this craziness for you, okay? Uh, and also, basically uh, just seeing everybody join us in our social media is great. Uh, we want to be here to help you. All right. So let's go over uh, clean waters. Clean waters. Uh, we work out of the Banana River Lagoon. And for those of you that have been blessed enough to see that area, it's absolutely beautiful. Waist high, warm water for miles and miles and miles. But sometimes it's not as clean as we would like. And not too long ago, we had a big fish kill because of algae blooms. And what causes those algae blooms? Uh, I went to a, a visitor board meeting and had uh, a really uh, great doctor from the uh, Indian River Lagoon Society come out and, and give us some facts. And, and some of the biggest culprits are us, human beings. Um, we love our green lawns, we love our property values, and so we fertilize our lawns whenever we can. That fertilizer runs into the river, causes you know high nitrate levels and uh, the rest is history you get algae and it chokes off the oxygen to the fish and the plants and everything else that makes our rivers beautiful so although brown lawns aren't pretty think how bad your property values are gonna be if you have dead fish on your lawn all the time and you've got that horrible stink so if you can cut back on some of the fertilizer save your money uh, let your grass grow tall. I know in some places you can't do that, but that's one thing. The other thing that I was really surprised about, I didn't know a lot about, was the fact that septic tanks here in Brevard County anywhere are, uh, Brevard County area, are absolutely horrid. They're leaking all over, so there's, there's waste all over, which again builds those nitrates. Those nitrates go into the river. River gets algae blooms. Algae blooms kill the fish. The dolphins are unhappy. So keep the dolphins happy. Keep me happy. Keep yourself happy. Keep the water clean. It's really easy, okay? Other than that, do the normal stuff. Pick up your garbage. Don't put oil into the river, all that stuff. So, on to the fun stuff. See, I even have notes, guys. Notes. We're keeping, we're keeping everything on point for you. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, Roman, 321 Kiteboarding, and this is our What's Up Wednesday. So, we're going to move on to the second part of our episode, and that is going to be progression. So, whether or not you've taken the first steps of buying your gear or you're currently in gear that you first bought and you're thinking about something new, you may be asking yourself, what is it that I can buy that is going to help my progression? So 
One of the things that we'll go with with beginner, I threw all my cards away or I put those up again. Um, with beginners, you really want a kite that's uh, going to be the best for you to learn with. And that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But to us here at 321, what we like to promote is a kite that, number one, relaunches really, really well. Number two, it's going to be very stable, meaning it doesn't jump around the sky, it can adjust really well. Number three, it can handle a wide range of not only wind, but wind conditions. That's gonna make it so that you can use the kite more often, you can relaunch, which means that you're gonna be more comfortable and more confident out in whatever conditions, whether it's ocean or flat water. And uh, the stability and usability is, is great because that means you can go out whenever you need to. And you don't need as much gear. The second group of people are those of you who have been riding for a bit, but maybe you want a different style kite to do something different. And that comes down to having a kite that really fits your needs. Whether you want to learn how to boost to the moon or you're looking to do more freestyle, you need a kite that's going to be you know, more advantageous for those conditions. One of the biggest developments in kite building has become that open sea or intermediate style kite. Uh, for any of you familiar with North or Core or even Cabrina, those kind of kites are going to be like the Switchblade, the Core GTS-4 the North Dice. Those kites are gonna give you a lot better freestyle ability, a lot more unhooked ability, and if you're getting into kite loops, they're gonna give you some really good kite looping skills. So those are kites that you may wanna look at. They're still very user friendly. They relaunch well. They handle wide wind range. They're very stable, but they have those added performance benefits of a higher performance kite. And then there's those of you that have more specifics. Maybe you want to do only surf. That's your only thing that you're interested in. And for that, the biggest uh, development in kites has been wave kites. They're phenomenal, and there's a ton of them, and it's very, very confusing. So we definitely recommend trying one before you buy. Of course, we're one of the largest test centers on the East Coast, so you can come down and grab a kite whenever you like. Um, but you really want to get your hands on a wave kite. If you're in the wave, there is absolutely nothing better than a specific kite just for that. But there's drawbacks. The drawbacks are pretty simple. It's not gonna be an all around kite. It's not gonna be a good jumper nine times out of 10. It's not gonna be good at freestyle. When I mean freestyle, I mean unhooked, uh, handle pass type maneuvers. It's just not meant for that. It's good in the waves and it's a good free ride kite. They typically all of them are going to be like that, like the core section uh, or the North Neo. Okay, And then there are those of you that are just out there for pure professional grade material. And those of you, you already know what you want. It's that hardcore sea kite, like the core impact or the North Vegas. Those kites are going to be kite looping machines and they're just going to be hardcore. So for most of you, stay away from those. Go back to either a nice beginner style kite or a good intermediate style kite that's either for freestyle or for wave or a combination of both. Now, as you can see from our lovely assistant, I've got some boards here. We're going to go over the basics of, of boards. I mean, really, really simple and um, it doesn't take a lot. So if you're just joining us, again, Ramon, 321 Kiteboarding. This is What's Up Wednesday board section. I need sound effects, right? Like an echo? Anyway. So this is a core fusion. Just to give an idea, this is kind of a good beginner style board. This is going to be a board that is going to get you up and going when you don't have many board skills. And it also is going to double as your light wind style board. What makes this a stable board? These big wide tips here, okay? And it's a longer, wider board. So that's going to enable you to plane out and get up on the board a lot sooner. And when there's lighter winds, it's going to add a much more stable platform for you to go riding with and to stay up wind. So these are great boards to start out with because they have a dual purpose. You're going to learn on it and it's also going to become your basic everyday light wind style board. So that's a core fusion, great board, carbon fiber. There's lots of other brands out there as well that fit the same thing. But if you want the best, sometimes you got to go with the best, right? Um, the next type of board for those of you that maybe started with a big board and now you really want something that's going to take you to that next freestyle level so you're doing 
railies, unhooked uh, tricks, 313s, maybe you're just jumping and you really want something with good pop, you may want to move on to an intermediate style board. Now what does make makes this an intermediate style board is it's got lots of rocker. So from intermediate freestyle board. Now for those of you that are just rippers and you absolutely kind of want the best for freestyle, for hitting kickers, uh, sliders, and uh, also to make a really nice, you know, double up for a cable park session. That's going to be something like the core bolt. The bolt is just built strong. This particular board has double carbon fiber everywhere, a slider base, and uh, it's really just meant to take some abuse. Again, this is going to have even more of a rocker profile than your intermediate style board. Whereas your beginner style board is going to have very little rocker to no rocker and very little to no concave. And this one again has a really nice bottom contour so that you can really grip just using the bottom side of the board, not having to rely on your fins. So this is going to be a very, very nice freestyle board. And of course, it will double up as your kicker, slider, and park board. So that's how you progress in this sport. Buy a ton of gear. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really don't have to. What's nice is you can progress to your level based on whatever you have right now. Most of this is technique, and these are just some added tools to help you get to that next level if you need to. But uh, again, that's basically all I've got for you. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful What's Up Wednesday. And I do appreciate you hanging out with me for these few minutes on what is today for me a very rainy day. And uh, I hope that everybody has a great weekend and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. So I'm signing off. I'm going goodbye. Arrivederci. I'm leaving now, seriously.